camp or, or yeah, and, and, and you know you need a little time with each other. Sometimes you want to take, you, you send the kids away, you send the kids to grandma's, or you send the kids away, or some of the kids are already gone away. But you spend quality time with the one that you love. Also, there are times as families, as a family, you want to spend quality time with each other. You want to spend time, quality is simply something that really matters. It really, really matters. But what happens, we spend the quantity, now listen, quantity is really just about numbers, you know? Because if it could be, this place could be jam-packed would be the quantity, right? But if, if, if we're not, if you got a jam-packed congregation and people not praising the Lord or entering into the Spirit of God, that don't mean anything. We need the quality. Even if there's three people in here that want to worship God and praise Him and give Him glory and I'm going to do unto His name, that's the quality. The time that you spend in prayer is not so much, oh Lord, I, oh, I fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and God, I ain't got time Oh Lord, as soon as that you get out, you cussing somebody out. So that was more of quantity. But quality time, you can fast for, you can fast for 40 seconds or 40, 40 minutes and you come out changed. When there's quality, there is change. Even in relationships, we're, we're not just spending time with somebody just so that somebody, I can say, I spent time with somebody. Oh honey, well we, we I took you to the movies yesterday. No, oh yeah, you took me to the movies, but you didn't pay any attention to me. Opposed to we, oh honey, we just sat on the porch for about 10 minutes, and I tell you, I just enjoy looking at those beautiful, beautiful brown eyes, that smooth, supple skin. And honey, I, oh, y'all, y'all calm down. <laughs> and then, you know, like, I just enjoy the time with you, honey. Children, mom, I really enjoyed hanging out. We had such a good time. It makes a difference than just trying to do something because you begin to wane in your uniqueness when you just do it for form or fashion. The psalmist said in 119, 55, 60, and 62, in the night, I remember your name, O Lord, and I will keep your law. At midnight, I rise to give you thanks for your righteous law. Now, at night, I don't remember your name so I can tell pastor that I called on Jesus last night. At night or at midnight, I don't wake up and, and give you thanks so I can tell the youth leader that, you know what, I, was, I woke up at midnight. How many of you, be honest, said, oh, I was up at 3 o'clock this morning just talking to the Lord. And it's okay if you just say it, but when you're saying it just so that you can boast about it, that's not pleasing in the sight of God. That becomes more so a quantity time and not quality. Because there are times and moments that you spend with people that you enjoy that you don't have to tell nobody about. And then there are times that it's just so awesome that you're like, you know what, I had a wonderful time with my, my daughter. You know, we have been on the, on the down and out, but... I just spent about five minutes just talking to her and telling her how much I thanked her and I'm proud of her and, and it just did me so good and you know what? It took our relationship to a whole nother level. You know, Mama, I don't want anything. I'm not going to wash dishes because I want to go to a party. I'm not going to do this because I want to sleep over at, John, at, at Janet's house. I'm doing this, Mama, just to let you know that I appreciate you. And I enjoy just washing the dishes and us spending time and talking together. Quality time. Quality time with God. And I'm just giving you these examples so we understand. Quality time with God is very, very important in our walk of uniqueness. You. Number five. Unite with other believers. Unite with other believers. He who seeketh, he who isolates himself. Seek it after his own wisdom. That's the word of God. So Psalm 133, 1 says, How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. Let us not give up meeting together. So our assembling together, and I'm reading from the NIV version. 
So our assembling together is very important. Not just here in church, but fellowshipping. Some of us have a fellowship with our parents or, or our, our um, brothers and sisters, and I don't, God knows how long, just to spend some time with them and to unite. Because when you're spending that time, and sometimes, tell the truth, if you spend way too much time, you don't want to over, uh, you don't want to wear out your welcome. You understand what I'm saying. You understand what I'm saying. But it's very important to stay in contact with one another and to help build a relationship with other believers. Now, if it's at all possible, be at peace with all men, but some men, not the other, you can't be at peace with them because they're always keeping something up. Is that you? Is that me? Every time you get around, they're talking about what everybody else is doing and not keeping their minds on what they're doing. E, encourage others and yourself. In the power of uniqueness, because there's a lot that happens that comes on this road and comes on this journey. But if you don't encourage others, the scripture tells us, let me read this in Colossians 2.23. The Apostle Paul was talking about this, and he says that my purpose, this is what he said his purpose was, <coughs> is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love, so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding, in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom all hidden in whom all are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. That was his prayer for the men and women of God. Our prayer should be to encourage one another. And as we're encouraging one another, we are receiving encouragement ourselves. Because when we are, I don't know about you, but I, 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 had, I could go through and have such a rough day. I tell you, it just, just so difficult. I, I believe it was Friday night. I was just so exhausted because God blessed ministry and I thank God for all of the supporters that came. Thank God for Pastor and Elder and, and um, my brothers and sisters and you here that you prayed and you, your support. It was awesome. But we've been on the road. I've been on the road back and forth, but I was so exhausted to a point of feeling physically ill. And I just began to get go lower and lower, just into myself, into myself. I woke up that morning about 7 o'clock, and I saw an unknown number on my cell phone. And that unknown number, I, I didn't know who it was. I asked my husband, I said, how do you know who this is? And he didn't know. And, and so anyway, it just troubled my heart, but I prayed. And then what I did, I finally checked. I checked the message. And it was a, a message was left about 2.40 in the morning, just of an elderly woman just moaning and groaning, oh, Father, help me, Father. Oh, God, Father, Father, Father. And I just immediately forgot about myself. Because the Lord, I know that it was God that allowed me to this woman, she, and then I, I later called this number to find out who she was. She didn't know. She said, I didn't call anybody, baby. She said, because I didn't call nobody but God. Because can't nobody help me but God. Jesus. And she began praising God and giving the glory that I was calling to encourage her. She encouraged my spirit. She was in so much pain, just groaning and, and groaning, and it made a little bit of stuff that I was going to through null and void. Because as I began encouraging her, her spirit man began to rise up, and her spirit man, it, it, it didn't lift me up, it didn't lift man up, she just began to lift up God, and tell God, God, there's no other God like you, Lord. You are And 
every disappointment, every distraction, every spirit of shame and guilt and, and anything that I found at that moment dissipated went out the window because of the E and unique encouragement. I said that not to boast but to share as a testimony. And I just, and that I know that that was God because this woman didn't know me. She didn't know how she got me. She said, baby, I didn't even have a phone. She said, I didn't even have a phone. But God heard her cry. And God heard her cry. Why? She was unique. I can guarantee you that that woman used the word of God in every situation. She never compromised. She illuminated Jesus. She had quality time with God. She united with other believers and encouraged others. Because in order to get to a whole point, I, I haven't met anybody. Actually, she kind of reminded me of the woman um, on the song, Jesus, he writes out all my prescription with John P. Key. Very unique, as you are very unique. Whoever God has made you is you. Whether you say it eloquently, whether you dance to the best, whether uh, with the best of them or sing to the best of them or look better than them, you know that you are unique. Yeah, amen. And that there's nobody like you. But where you will mess up and where we mess up is trying to form ourselves into who somebody else wants us to be. Amen. And not into who God has called us to be. I'm not saying we can't have models of, oh, you know, I like that on her or so-and-so, I like that. But when we begin to emulate and we be, and envy become, become upon us and we can't even open our mouth to bless one another, that is not a unique personality. But you look and it's okay to admire and to honor, but we have to give honor where honor is too. How many of us have blessed the house today for the things that's being done? How many of us have blessed our brother or our sister and, and said, you know what? When, that, when the wars were going on, how many of you really encouraged them and said, oh, I thank God, that's awesome. Other than in the back of your mind, well, I wish it was me. Uh -huh. Oh, well, she ain't all that. Who she thinks she is? And I'm being, I'm, I'm speaking this because the devil speaks to our minds. Yeah, he yeah. began to talk to us about each other. Uh -huh. And he begins to cloud us up and that in itself removes us from being unique. Yeah. Yeah. But the devil is, a, and you know I'm very honest and I'm, I'm going to say this to the youth again. I have never seen in my life so many, I mean I was with, I think his baby was five or six years old. And a strong, jealous spirit was on this child at that young age. Jesus, Jesus. And I can guarantee you that that baby don't understand her uniqueness. And that she's unique. Yeah. And she don't have to compare herself to nobody else. Yeah. It don't matter about your skin color. It don't matter about your hair, whether it's kinky. I heard Pastor Shirley say, we all got good hair. Yeah. Yeah. They said, oh, you know she got good hair. Pastor Shirley said, we all got good hair. Yeah. And I have to say that because sometimes I talk about my own self. And see, the devil really don't do a lot because we talk about our own self so bad. Yeah. See, he's the prince of the power of this air and of this world. And what he does, he speaks things in the atmosphere. Yeah. He brings the spirit of offense and you get offended by anything. Somebody probably got offended because I came dancing on Kirk Franklin's song. Somebody probably got offended because I got on a long skirt. I got my hair back. Somebody probably got offended because I got a rose on my finger. Mm. Why she wore that? That's the devil. I wore it because I'm unique. Why did you wear what you have on? Why did you do your hair the way you did? Why did you say what you said? Because you're unique. And if you don't like it, you've been going off. Ah, you got your shot. Well, why she had to put transparency in us? Come on. Because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Why do you have to wear your hair flipped up, baby girl? Because you what? You you need. Mama, why you had to dress like you were coming to my wedding? Why you 
away with it now. You unique, mama. Somebody else now, you might have to, you know what? You <laughs> unique. Yo, I'm serious. I do my sisters like that. <laughs> what? If they say a little bit too much about my husband, I'm like, oh, hey, 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 hold on now. Because I'm unique like that. All right. You, I say to you, you are unique. You don't have to emulate or be like anybody but Jesus. Now, we, we, can, we can say, oh, this person's my mentor. I love the way they do this, and God, God uses other people. But you have to make sure that you keep your own personality. Yeah. That's right. Because when you start doing that, you start losing your uniqueness. That's right. That's so cool. And God knows what your name is. Yeah. And there are many times that we need to kind of do a little better about being unique. Yeah. And uh, it's not so much of you have to look all you know, just uh, eccentric or just, I gotta wear bright colors, or I gotta do this, I gotta wear black all the time to make me unique because what you wear is not your uniqueness. What starts inside of you and then it begins to dress you. Then it be begins to dress you. I dare you right now just to think of something that makes you unique. What is that one thing that sets me apart for my sister or my brother. What's that one thing that shines and, and that illuminates in me and makes me unique? They have something called uh, America's Got Talent. And so people come out and they want to see how unique they are. People do some weird stuff. I mean, they do stuff from burning their skin to, to putting knives in their mouths. And I don't mean that I look unique. That look kind of crazy. You know, because I try to put a knife down my throat. But it's what makes them unique. Their uniqueness. That show is built on people's unique talents. What is it that God has given you to set you aside from somebody else? You don't have to teach like them and preach like them. And now I want, we need to understand this because sometimes, oh, she's trying to preach like so and so and so and so. Because there are similarities. Amen. Okay? There's similarities in the body of Christ and with some, with some people because I know some I look, I mean, it's really like just like me. But it does not mean that she has the same uniqueness that I have. Amen. There's still something unique Amen. about her that I don't have or can't do. Something unique about me that she doesn't have or can't do. So there are going to be similarities. And, and I want to say this to you. There are going to be, I want to prophesy this. There are going to be places and roads that you're going to go down and, and go through. And it's going to make it seem as if it's going to be so similar to a place that you've been before. And it will bring fear. I can't do that no more. I can't go down that road. But here clearly, be in the word of God. Because God's going to speak to you to do some things. He's going to lead you and guide you. And if fear is guiding you. You will not make your destiny wrong. Amen. Because God said he's not giving you the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. And fear comes because he doesn't want us to be full of uniqueness. And there are things that God has told some of you to do here in this ministry. But you won't because you're afraid that somebody will laugh at you. But the Bible says that the fear of man will put us into a snare. Amen. The fear of man or the fear in the scripture and the, the message version says that the fear of human opinions will disable us. Amen. And so if we care about how somebody else is going to view something or, or, or what somebody else will say about that, it will bind us up. And so we have to be very careful and not and, and, and not being bind by their opinions opposed to uh, I don't give a flip and you just rebellious. You understand? Because sometimes you can just don't, don't care about nothing and not submit it, don't have accountability. I'm not talking about on that spectrum. Amen. But the fear of God of what he said, I got God, I gotta do what you tell me to do because I tell you I'm unique. Because you made me. Man didn't create me. And as we continue to walk out of that, I'm going to go back and finish this up. But at 13, y'all thought I forgot. When I was 13 years old, and I went through all this, all the comparison, I felt like I was nothing. I couldn't even look in a mirror. I 
could, I wouldn't look in a mirror because I was so broken. I had such low self-esteem. But I remember when Jesus Christ came into my heart and he delivered me and set me free Amen. from the angels of my past. At 13 years old, I said, Lord, you delivered me and I thank you for setting me free. Lord. I will be all that you called me to be. And not only that, not for my good, but I will encourage somebody else to be all that you called them to be. And no longer because the low self-esteem and the, the, the horrible confidence, that's not a God. We boast in God. He said that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. But God is going to release a level of confidence like never before in this house and also in the surrounding areas because we got a work to do for the Lord. And we have to have that confidence that God has given us, that uniqueness that he's given us because I can't do it what you can do. You can't do what I can do. I can't do what you can do. What you can do. Everybody has their own place. And so there's a work that God is doing and he's going to build it. He's going to remove the timidity and the false humility. That's all been hiding as a cover for being truly human, human, humble. We bind that up in Jesus' name. And we release these men and women of God in your destiny. We release these children, these youth in, your, in their destiny, Lord. We thank you, God. We bind up those night terrors that's coming to these children at night. And, he, and the night terrors are even coming to some adults. But we bind those night terrors in Jesus' name. And we thank you, God, that their uniqueness will manifest itself in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for releasing power, love, and the sound mind. And we give you the glory for that in Jesus' mighty and matchless name. Have you changed your name? Yeah. What does your tag say now? Hello, my name is who? You me. Say it again. You me. What's your name? You me. What's your name? You, me. you are unique. And don't let anybody tell you differently. Don't let anybody else try to put you in a box. But you be all that God has called you to be. Because eyes have not seen, nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those that love him. And we break out the lie of the enemy and all those evil words that have been spoken against you, telling you you're nothing, you're nobody, you won't amount to anything. Those things that have been done to you in the dark that have caused you to be in a, in a place of timidity and fear and anger and bitterness. We bind those up in chains and fetters. We bind up the violence that has occurred in Jesus' name. We break the hand of the enemy and the work of the enemy in Jesus' mighty and natural name. Hallelujah. The disappointment and the discouragement. We bind that. Stand to your feet, please. He knows my name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. He knows your name. Because you are unique. And this worship is going on in it. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. And we thank you for releasing it. It's just something that's holding me back and he doesn't really know my name because I don't really know him. But I want to get to know him. If that's you and you want to get to know Jesus, you want to give him your heart so that he knows your name and that others would know that you're named in the name of Jesus. You can come.
I know I've gotten out of this wheel. But I want to rededicate my life to the Lord. If that's you, come, please. If that's you, come. It's about your soul. About your soul. Hallelujah. Oh, my, my, my. She gave her heart to Jesus. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, yeah. 